So a lot of you OG Levi's Vintage Clothing fans, you are gonna be happy. And a lot of you guys that got into Levi's Vintage Clothing over the last couple of collections, you're gonna be happy too. And for all you guys that fell asleep and this was rolled over from Carl's last vid, Levi's Vintage Clothing is the sub-brand of Levi's that builds all of the collections from the brand's history. And in the last couple of seasons, they've looked to the much, much more recent past than they ever have done before. They looked at the 80s punk scene in Louisville, and then they looked to the 90s rave scene in Manchester. And that's 1980s and 1990s, not 1880s and 1890s. Now, the reception to these more modern day collections was a bit mixed. Actually, it really, it was very galvanizing. Like some guys really, really liked it, really appreciated it. Some guys really, really hated it. There didn't seem to be a lot of middle ground. And I get that, there wasn't so many pieces that, that I could find within those collections that I gravitated towards but then as I said in the videos that I did on those these collections really weren't for me. I think that these last two collections were trying to open up the Levi's Vintage Clothing brand to, uh, to a new audience. Not a wider audience because because as I said it, it tended to alienate a lot of the old Levi's Vintage Clothing fans. They really just couldn't find any piece within that that they could identify, identify with or associate with the brand that they, they'd known and the, the brand that they knew and loved. And in a way, it was a little bit fashion because the certainly the spring summer collection, it really leaned heavily into this whole sort of 90s revival that we're seeing right now. And you know what? Fair enough. I mean, it, it's life would be very dull if we just repeated the same thing over and over again. And if a brand were just to repeat the same thing over and over again, it really wouldn't last long. I mean, how many different ways can you tell the story of the Nevada miners or dress people like cowboys? How many people really want to dress like a miner or a cowboy? But right, the OG guys, you guys are gonna be super, super happy. For this season, they've gone back to the 50s, which I would say would be considered as the heyday of the blue jean. It was at this time that jeans were just at the, the start of their journey. Before this, they'd just been a workwear staple. And now they were being adopted as part of the uniform for first the culinary culture, then the youth culture, and by extension of this fashion, blue jeans were just the, the uniform of the rebel. And Marlon Brando helped that a lot, as well as, as Jimmy Dean. Who wouldn't want to dress up like these guys? They, they look fucking cool. And like most things that are fucking cool, that are a little bit thrilling, People who are neither of those things want to cash in on those. And so movies were made that promised all the, the thrills and spills of this sensationalized youth culture, this, this one that really blossomed during the 50s. And the, the posters for these movies, the trailers for these movies, they would promise all of this like rock and roll, like rebels with and without causes. I know they're gonna catch me. Gangs of moody teens stalking the streets, burning grandmothers. This must have just been like catnip to these, these stiffs and these, these tourist rebel teens. They would just flock to the theatres and the drive-ins and they would, they would take part in this, in this youth culture, in this movement, in this rebellious idea, but vicariously. The thing is, these stiffs that were making the movies didn't really get it. And there was also a whole bunch of other stiffs that were editing out anything that was going to make the movie at all interesting. So the main problem was that these movies were never really any good. They just never lived up to the hype. What they did do is create like a little sub-genre of cult classics. And that's exactly what LVC has looked to when they're forming and being inspired for this collection. But the thing is, this was never actually a part of history. And so I think unlike all other LVC collections, all the ones that I'm aware of, these things never really were based on reality. They were based on a stylized ideal of reality. And this just means that Paul and his team at LVC could really have quite a lot of fun with this. And you can see that when you're looking through this lookbook. And right, just quickly here, because I guess most of you guys will, will know this. Levi's Vintage Clothing used their, their lookbook not just to, to show off the pieces, to show off the, the garments, 
they use it as a as a vehicle to to tell the story of the collection to drive that narrative the images give a context and that context adds a depth to the garments adds a depth to the collection it's how they've always done it and i really think that this is one of the the key strengths or the core strengths of levi's vintage clothing as a brand so let's take a look okay yeah it usually starts with this where we've got the piece from the collection and we've got the original piece that this piece from the collection was based on but you can see that they've just used this original piece as an inspiration and they have thrilled they've stylized the the new piece and yeah, here we get the first movie, The Shocking Truth. Tempted, tarnished, violently separated. You guys thrilled yet? Right, they seem to be in some sort of gang with matching jackets. She's got a motorbike. Then this dude turns up and she seems to be doing that thing that I used to do to my teachers in primary school where you just like stare over the shoulder just to drive them nuts, even when you're talking to them. Because she doesn't give a shit, like his jacket's got absolutely no fades, like no fades, no props given me. And she's like, fuck, where's I leave my keys? Then these two are like, ha we've got a car. But now he's lost his keys, has to wait for AAA. Just who got tainted here? It totally underdelivered on the thrills as promised, but the Johns are absolutely sick. Those satin jackets are just amazing and that print on the back is absolutely fire. And I don't know if this is a shirt or a jacket, but whatever, I really want it. Right, next. Los Gatos de la Muerte. Muerte. Remember how I can't speak French? or pronounce anything in German. Yeah, I can't speak Spanish either, so just bear with me. Okay, the biker chicks are back, and it seems that somebody has stolen their bike. Do they only have one? And he's like, Mwah, I've got your bike. He's now found his keys and a really sick new jacket. Maybe he's actually just part of the gang. And he's like, dude, give it back or she's gonna tear you a new one. And she's just chilling because she's got this new leopard print number that she's so super happy with. And then he's like, okay, I'm gonna deal with this. Is it just me or is his hands kind of like the, the old action figures you used to get where you could like stick guns into them? Anyway, whatever. He's like, I'm gonna deal with this. And she's like, okay, I need to sit down. I've been on my feet for hours. And he's just like, bitch, please. She doesn't seem to have another expression ever. Action grip hands, gonna poke his eyes out, but instead apparently just decides to pop him in the jaw. Then this is a bit weird. He's won the fights, but he still decides to pull a knife adding serious injury to insult and adding quite a few years to, to his jail sentence. They've both lost their jackets. Maybe he got kicked out the gang for being a Nancy. Limbo Dance was invented right here. And then somehow, inexplicably, he gets stabbed. Probably stabbed himself. She's not changed the expression at all. The only difference is she's covering that same expression with her hands. <laughs> and I can't tell if she's shocked or horny. And where'd she come from? And why are they running? He's got a car. Ah, okay, probably to show off her matching shoes and jacket. Oh, was this Juvenile Witness? Where's, where's the, the other one? Where's Los Gatos de la Muerte? Here, I guess. So, this dude copped that leather jacket on Grailed, but it doesn't fit and he's super, super pissed off. But his girl is just like, oh, you know, I'm gonna look good in that. Then why can't I have it? Because this is my one of one Japanese release collab vintage Americana Japanese release collab, collab brand, collab jacket. I've always wanted, I have to have it. It has to work. I'll, I, I'll shrink. Oh, why do my arms have been so damn long? Shut up, I've taken up ornithology and you're scaring the birds away. And now two completely new people are jacking a car. And that's not how you jack a car. Ah, okay, that's the same dude that got punched. This is starting to make sense, kinda. So he murdered that guy, had to ditch his clothes and his ride, they're on the run, they've got some new clothes and a new ride that they had to steal. Okay, it's the, the pieces are falling into place. But she's so super, super sad that she had to leave the leopard print. I get it. Oh, okay, there's another movie. Teen terror, savage punks and a weekend of violence. But just the weekend, because you've got to be at work on Monday. So he's doing exactly what I do when I cop something that doesn't fit. Persevere against all odds and decency. And it appears that he's found that first girl's bike who got the bike stolen by this guy who got stabbed. But it also looks like he's not actually riding it, he's just sitting on it. 
pretending. Vroom, vroom. He's scratching his ass and she's looking at the map. Now he's like, how the fuck did we end up in this tree and why are you wearing a duffel coat in the desert? And now he's smelling dirt, cause why not? And he obviously copped those jeans as part of like a bulk buy off Grailed, cause seems he's copped those jeans off the same guy that he bought the jacket off that was two sizes smaller than him. They're running towards something or away from something. Ah, away from the nutcase with the rope. Okay, now he's back for some reason. And I told you he stabbed himself. And for her jeans to be that fucked up, that is just a tiny, tiny little boo-boo. And now she's back wearing her man's denim jacket, but this one actually might fit him. She's really having a bad day. See, she also had to leave behind her leopard print shoes. But wait. Her boyfriend's back and he learned a thing or two from the last fight. And Lurch here looks like he is particularly okay about being hit in the balls with a bat. But no, somehow he's hit himself with a bat, knocked himself cold. I don't know what it is with these people, but they seem particularly good at murdering themselves. She's got her bike back, she's got her binoculars, and a bargain basement Negan. And she's just like, what the fuck happened? And yeah, so am I. But anyway, right, the clothes, because there are some absolutely amazing pieces in there. I mean, my favorite definitely has to be the satin jackets, but th these prints and also the knits as well. And you guys know, I do have a soft spot for a leather jacket, especially like a pared down perfecto style leather jacket. And the washes, they do look pretty decent as well. And I like the way that they've rolled with this pattern throughout. Now, there are a few bits that didn't make it into the sort of the, the editorial part of the lookbook, but they're definitely worth a mention. And I get why they didn't make it into the editorial part of the lookbook. They, they wouldn't really fit. But with these pieces, you get a, a flip side of the collection. It rounds it out a little bit. I mean, I just, I love these two hoodies with the washed out faded colors. And these print tees just go so super well with the print art. And these pocket tees and this jacket. I, all of these pieces, as I said, these are the, the counterpoint to the collection. They're the flip side of this collection. You can really imagine these pieces, these big, bold pieces being up on the silver screen. And you can imagine the teens in the audience or the drive-in, wherever, They'd be wearing the, the, the more refined, not more refined, the more subdued pieces that we see here. It's, it just, as I was saying, it just, it gives a, a counterpoint. It, it just makes sense in the narrative overall. Right, so my thoughts on this collection. I, I like it. Actually, I love it. It's full of pieces that I really would actually wear. I would actually wear Levi's if you're listening. And I think a lot of the, the OG guys, the guys that were just hating in the last collection, I, I think you're gonna find a lot of stuff in there to love. But it also retains some of that, that, that fun from the last two collections. It keeps that really, really strong print game. It keeps the bold colors. It really uses that element of, of stylized fantasy to give us something that, that we definitely recognize as being Levi's vintage clothing, but it, also works in, in the new direction. That exploration of, of new customers, that, that opening up to, to a new market. And I really appreciate that. Just like Fall Winter 20 and Spring Summer 21, I think this is a very, very smart direction that Levi's Vintage Clothing are going in. But yeah, guys, what do you think? Am I right in what I say? That the, the OG, the original LVC fans, are you into this collection? And, and the guys who were, who maybe discovered the brand through, through the last two collections, the, this new direction for Levi's, is there something for you in this collection? Just let me know in the comments below. I'm really, really curious. And when you're on your way down there, guys, you're gonna be passing the like button. You're gonna be passing the subscribe button. If you've enjoyed this video, if you felt it's brought you something, then it'd be amazing if you give us one of those thumbs up. That, that really does help out the channel. And if you're into denim, if you're into menswear, if you're into quality menswear, then consider hitting that subscribe button because once, twice a week when I can, I drop a video all about that. That just leaves me to say, guys, as always, I hope everyone is happy and healthy out there. Hope you're taking care of yourselves. Hope you're taking care of each other. And I'm going to see you in the next video.